OK. So. The next topic is on noise hazard. Okay. So a uh, noise hazard is um, something that's not alien to us or to anybody. We get this. Uh, a lot of people are exposed to noise hazard. Okay, it's actually like millions of people. Their their hearing is always at risk. Um, and um, this noise hazard is actually an occupational risk. If uh, if we look at these uh, jet fighters, for example, okay, uh, um, the persons that's involved in this jet uh, or, or the pilot who flies this jet engine are uh, exposed to a uh, high level of noise and that can cause adverse effect to the pilots and not just the pilots the noise from the jet planes also affects the people or the around the area and then it can damage um, the, yeah, the hearing of the other people too. OK, so noise. So what is noise? So noise is something that you don't like. You, we don't like to hear noises. We like music. We love soft sounds of the waves, right? So noise is defined as sounds that is unwanted. And this is actually one of the most common health problems. NIOSH, uh, worldwide, okay. NIOS estimates that 30 million workers, uh, for example, in America, 30 million workers are exposed to hazardous noise. And then the exposure to high level noise can cause hearing loss, not just hearing loss, it can also create stress physically and psychologically. Let's say you're trying to study and then you hear this a uh, person next door who is practicing his cello, for example, practicing his drum, and that causes psychological stress to you, although it's music to that person, but it's stress to you. And then it can reduce your productivity when you are under stress, it reduces your productivity. It interferes with communication. You're trying to communicate with somebody, but because the, but the noise is interfering with uh, whatever you're trying to say. And it can also contribute to accident and injuries. For example, um, you are not able to hear your colleague next to you who's screaming for help, or you're, you're not able to hear the siren, uh, the uh, um, emergency siren, and you're supposed to evacuate, for example. Okay, so it can contribute to accidents. Now, um, so I mentioned just now, right? Uh, a person playing a violin next door who's practicing violin while you're studying. So that violin mu can be music to that person, but it's noise to you. So, so sound is uh, it depends on the individual, okay? Because noise is something that's excessive and it's unwanted. You don't want it but it's there so that is noise so what is sound actually so sound is actually a change of pressure it's these pressure waves that the brain receives okay there's a this pressure variation uh it goes through your ear and the brain receives it and uh it uh interprets as whether it's a noise or is it a, a nice sound or is it a music to the ears okay so uh how sound, uh, how the brain interprets sound is um, when you have sound going into your ear, which is, let's say, this is the outer ear, it goes through the outer ear, it hits the eardrum. So the eardrum here vibrates, okay? And that vibration or the energy from the vibration is transferred to these three little bones. So these are the auditory bones. So these three little bones um, trans. Tra transfers or transmit the energy further into the inner ear. In, in the, into the inner ear here, that's the cochlea. 
So inside this cochlea, so this is a, um, a bigger view of the cochlea. The cochlea looks like a snail. But inside the cochlea, there are many little uh, like hair. So these hair, they move as they receive the, uh, uh, the energy. So when it moves, it uh, converts into electrical signal and then the electrical signal is being sent through this uh, pathway here, which is called the um, uh, an auditory line. And then it is sent, so it's this electrical signal is sent to the brain and then the brain will interpret whether it is uh, a music or it is an irritating noise from the neighbor. Okay. And then uh, noise in the industrial in the industrial place uh, poses two safety and health related problems. One of it is distraction. So distraction causes psychological uh, stress. And then there's hearing loss, which is um, almost irreversible because once you lose uh, or parts of this uh, of your ear is damaged is normally irreversible. Okay, so vibration. So I mentioned just now the vibration um, when the uh, the eardrums will vibrate when it receives this. Uh, difference in pressure. So vibration is inaudible. You cannot hear vibration. It, and it's only perceived by the sense of touch, which is by the uh, eardrums. Okay, decibel is the unit that we use to measure the level of sound. So a decibel is one tenth of a bell. So one decibel represents the smallest difference in the level of sound that can be perceived by human ear. That's the lower, the lowest that we can hear. So the threshold of hearing or the weakest sound that we can hear as a healthy human being in a quiet setting is one decibel A. Okay? This is the weighted A, A weighted decibel. Okay? It's one dBA. And the threshold of pain, which is the maximum level of sound that we can perceive without experiencing any pain is 140 decibel. Now, NIOSH uh, has a guideline of uh, general estimates of work-related noise. And um, uh, say the weakest sound is heard by the average ear is zero. Uh, a whisper, so if you whisper, or uh, if you hear the rattling of leaves uh, by the wind, so that's actually about 30 decibels. But a normal conversation is around 60 decibel. Or maybe if I, I increase my voice and shout, and then that's probably about 70 decibel. Okay. So uh, the telephone, the ringing of a telephone, well, nowadays there's a lot of different types of a telephone. I assume. A telephone would ring, uh, the ring of a telephone is about 80 decibel. And uh, NIOSH has put a limit that uh, if you're exposed to greater than 85 decibel, it can cause hearing loss. Okay, so what does it mean? Does it mean that if you use a hair dryer, if, if you use a power lawn mower, if you use a wrench, if you use these things, if you hear ambulance sirens, you're going to lose your, oh, your hearing? So no. What it means here is if you're exposed to greater than 85 decibel for extended time period, and then let's say for eight hours a day and you keep hearing it every day, then you are at risk of, um, of losing your uh, sense of hearing. Okay, so you can see a hair dryer, but you don't use hair dryer for eight hours straight every day for three hours, which is five days, right? But if you do, it, it can cause uh, hearing loss the same as uh, hearing a lock, rocket launch. Okay. And the loudest tone is 194 decibel. So these are the examples that are given the uh, belt sander, the hand drill, bulldozer, spray chain, uh, spray, spray painter, chainsaw, pneumatic percussion drill, 
jet engine at, at takeoff and so on. All right, so uh, let's look at the sources of noise at work. So almost all industries, well, except for working in a library, then you don't have noises. So a lot of industries such as entertainment industries, manufacturing, agriculture, shipbuilding, textiles, mining, quarrying, food and drink, uh, woodwork, metalwork, and construction, these all has a lot of noises. So the, some of the common sources of noises are uh, pneumatic tools, for example. If you use drills, you use grinders, riveting guns, those creates a lot of noise. And electrical tools such as circular saws, cutter heads, uh, engineering processes, metal fabrication, ventilation equipment that keeps on running continuously, electrical motors and generators, the use of heavy machineries, workplace transport, production lines, and loud music. So those are sources of noise at work. All right, so uh, being exposed to all of those noises for extended time can cause hearing loss. So hearing loss is uh, commonly is a result of a neural damage involving the injury to the hair cells. So this can be due to mechanical damage due to excessive shearing force. Let's say if you poke something into your ear, it damages uh, the eardrums. Uh, it can also be due to intense noise stimulation that forces the hair cells into high metabolic rate. So when the hair cells has to move so much and it overdrives those hairs to the point that the metabolic failure as well as cell death. So it will not be able to work anymore. And the hair cell inside the cochlea once it's destroyed, it cannot be regenerated.